Hello and welcome back to our history class, my dear students. Let us continue our history lesson, chapter 6, the revolt of 1857. Today, let us discuss the separation of the revolt of 1857, reason for the failure of the revolt, naming of the revolt, which is a debate till today, and finally, impact of the revolt. First, let's see separation of the revolt. The serious nature of the revolt came as a shock to the British. Their effort to regain control over their territories was led by their best commanders such as Henry Havelock, James Outram, Colin Campbell, Hans Ross, and John Lawrence. They inflicted great casualties on common people in villages and towns. Public hangings, executions and massacres were resorted to. Both sides committed atrocities against each other. By the end of 1857, the company slowly started regaining lost territories and by 1858, the revolt was crushed. Delhi, the now center of the revolt, was recaptured after pits battles at the Red Fort, Kashmiri Gate and the Chani Chok. Bahadur Shah Zafar was tried for treason, rebellion, and murder. He was exiled to Rangoon, where he died in 1862. His sons were shot in cold blood at the Kabuli Gate, which was then renamed Kuni Darwaza. The residents of Delhi were looted and massacred by the British forces. Nana Sahib was defeated at Kanpur but managed to escape to Nepal. Begum Hasran Mahal of Awad also escaped after the British recapture Lucknow. Other major leaders died in battle. Other regions controlled by the company, the presidencies of Bengal, Bombay and Madras did not witness the same turbulence as the rest of the country. In Punjab, there were incidents of mutiny in the Firozpur and Jhelum areas. In September 1858, Rai Ahmed Nawaz Khan Karal, the leader of the Kurul tribe, led a rebellion in the Nili Bar district in Punjab. When he was killed, the movement was led by Meher Bahawal Fatiana until the rebels were overcome by the British. Rani Avantibai Lodi led an army of 4,000 against the British. Though initially successful at Kheri, she was ultimately defeated and prefer to take her own life than surrender. The sentiments back home in Britain was one of revenge and the government encouraged harsh treatment of the rebels. By July 1858, order had been restored and British authority was re-established. Moving on to the next topic, failure of the revolt. Though the revolt sparked off a great deal of emotion in the people of the country, in the end, it was crushed quite easily. Historians believe that the revolt fell due to the following reasons. The revolt was confined to only a few areas. It did not spread to all parts of the country. Bengal, Assam, Orissa, Rajasthan, parts of Punjab and South India remained untouched by the revolt. The revolt did not get support from all sections of society. Many princely groups such as the chiefs of Nabah, Patiala, Karnal, and Jin, the Holkers and the Skindias, as well as the Rasput rulers, remained loyal to the British. The intellectual class did not participate or sympathize with the rebels. The rebels were poorly organized and did not have plans to replace the British institutions of government. The absence of a unifying ideology also did not help their cause. The scholars have pointed out that in contrast to the British leadership, the rebels did not have a strong leadership to fall back on. The rebels had several dynamic and brave personalities such as Rani Lakshmi Bai, Nana Sahib and Bak Khan, but they did not have experienced leaders for a prolonged contest. Bahadur Shah Zafar was an uninspiring and reluctant leader. The lack of modern weapons and technology also harmed the rebels' cause. Compared to the guns and cannons available to British troops, the rebels had to make do with swords, spears and pikes. At the same time, 
there was a military reorganization where the ratio of British to Indian soldiers was increased. Unlike the rebels, the British had access to good communication systems like the railways and the telegraph. Next, naming the revolt a debate. The revolt of 1857-1858 continues to generate debate and controversy in terms of its character and scope. British writers writing in the aftermath of 1857 called it the Sepoy Mutiny, attributed to the Enfield Rifle. This implied that the revolt was confined only to the Indian soldiers. However, Indian historians have gathered evidence to show that the uprising was much more widespread and powerful. Some feel that the appropriate name for the events of 1857 is the First War of Indian Independence as it was the first widespread uprising against British rule. Other, other scholars feel that this is not entirely accurate because independence was not the goal of the rebels. India was not yet a nation in the modern sense of the word and the loyalty of the Sepoys lay with the provincial kingdoms that they belonged to. Impact of the revolt The revolt saw the end of company rule in India. Through the Government of India Act 1858, India now came under the direct rule of the British Crown. The India Office was created to handle the governance and administration of the country. The head of this department was the Secretary of State, who was also entrusted with the for formulation of policies for India. The Governor General was henceforth to be called the Viceroy and was responsible for the implementation of the policies formulated by the India Office. After the transfer of the governing of India to the Crown, Queen Victoria issued a proclamation detailing the principles under which she intended to administer the country. It promised religious tolerance and non-interference in the ancient Indian customs and traditions. The rights of Indian rulers were recognized. They were assured that they would not be, there would be no more annexation of their lands. A military reorganization was arranged to end the dominance of the Bengal army. The ratio of British officers to Indian soldiers was increased. The armory remained in the hands of the English alone. Resistance to the British continued through localized revolts in the 19th century. The revolt of 1857 continued to inspire the imagination of the people and let them long for liberation from foreign rules. It paved the way for the rise of nationalism in India. With this, we conclude our lesson, Chapter 6, Revolt of 1857. Thank you.